gentleman from uh, Ohio, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At a memorial event for David Hamburg, Speaker Pelosi and I had a chance to discuss impeachment. Mr. Dean, who wrote that? I did. 19, uh, excuse me, one month ago, May 11th, 2019. Haven't we been too long in not giving Trump a meaningful moniker? Should it be deranged on, deadbeat on, demagogue on? Thoughts, please, comments. Mr. Dean, who wrote that? I assume that was mine. It was yours. 19 days ago, May 22nd, 2019, there was this. We are witnessing Trump's massive cover-up of his criminal behavior as POTUS. He's incapable of accomplishing anything. Mr. Dean, you know who wrote that? I suspect that was me again. It was you. I want to focus on that last sentence. As POTUS, as President of the United States, he, Donald Trump, is incapable of accomplishing anything. When you made that statement, Mr. Dean, what did you have in mind? You're thinking well, about the 3.2% economic growth rate, uh, rate we had the last quarter? Thinking about the fact we got the lowest unemployment in 50 years? How about the fact the hostages are back from North Korea? Maybe you were thinking about this. When you said the President of the United States was incapable of doing anything, were you thinking about the fact that the embassy is now in Jerusalem? I mean, I think about this one. Every single candidate for as many cycles as I can remember, Republican and Democrat, have promised the American people, you elect me, we're going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. And guess what? They get elected and they come up with a million reasons why they can't do what they said they were going to do. But this president didn't. The embassy is now in Jerusalem. So I'm just wondering, what were you thinking about when you said he's incapable of accomplishing anything? Uh, Mr. Jordan, I think that uh, under the parliamentary rules of the House, uh, I'm refrained from addressing a full answer to your question. <laughs> you you weren't, you, weren't refrained, uh, you weren't refrained in your tweets and your comments and the things my you tweet, wrote. My tweets are not subject to the parliamentary. They are subject belief. to state of mind and the perspective you bring to this hearing, and I think the American people understand. Let me ask you this then. Did you give advice to Lanny Davis or Michael Cohen prior to Mr. Cohen's testimony to Congress? No. Well, you said on Aaron Burnett's uh, show the night before Mr. Cohen testified in front of the Oversight Committee, that Michael Cohen should, you said you had talked to Lanny Davis, and that Michael Cohen should hold his testimony as long as possible from Republicans. You didn't say that to Mr. Davis? You said no. it on, on Aaron Burnett's show the night before well, Mr. I Cohen testified. I didn't say it uh, directly to Mr. Cohen was your question. No, it wasn't. My question was, did you give advice to Lanny Davis or Michael Cohen had, prior I've, to Mr. Cohen's testimony to Congress? Yeah, I have known Lanny Davis for almost a couple decades, uh, and we have talked about it. And I did say, uh, as soon as you turn your testimony over, it will be picked apart. So you instructed Michael Cohen's lawyer to keep information from Republicans to obstruct <laughs> the committee work that we were doing in the Oversight Committee just a few months ago? You, you told that to M Michael Cohen's lawyer? Uh, I didn't quite phrase it that well, way, no. You know what? They took your advice. I'm sorry? They took your advice. Did they? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Cohen that. kept his testimony from us for as long as possible. But you know what else Mr. Cohen did that day? Lied. Lied seven times. And this is, this is what I think concerns so many Americans. This is what concerns, I think, so many Americans about the work that's going on in this Congress, this 116. The first, the first announced witness of the 116th Congress was Michael Cohen, a guy who sits in prison today for lying to Congress. Today, Chairman Nadler brings in front of the Judiciary Committee a guy to talk about obstruction of justice who went to prison in 1974 for obstructing justice. I did not go to prison. Okay, you pled guilty to obstruction of justice. I'm glad you got to stay out of prison then, I guess. What bothers me the most, though, is this committee's failure to investigate how the whole Trump-Russia thing started. This is the Judiciary Committee. We're supposed to, how this whole thing began, and I, I said this a few weeks ago, but I want to remind this committee what the Attorney General of the United States said eight weeks ago when he testified in front of the Senate. He said four important things about the beginnings of the Trump-Russia investigation. He said there was a failure of leadership at the upper echelon of the FBI. His words, not mine. Upper echelon. That's certainly true. Comey, McKay, Baker, Strzok, Page, they've all been fired, demoted, let go, they're gone. Some of them are under investigation by the Justice Department. He said spying did occur. He said it twice. He said there's a basis for his concern about the spying that took place. And he used two terms that, again, I think this committee should find frightening and should be looking into. Unauthorized surveillance and political surveillance. Scary terms. So the good news is, even though this Congress 
has memorandums of understanding between the key committee chairman on how they're going to coordinate their attack on the president, even though this Congress, first big witness, first big hearing, Michael Cohen, a guy who sits in prison for lying to Congress, and even though we now have a guy testifying about obstruction of justice who pled guilty to obstruction of justice, we should be looking into the things Bill Barr's looking at. Now, the good news is Mr. Durham's doing that. But th this, is, this is the part, I think, that frustrates so many. Mr. Chairman, I would hope the Judiciary Committee and the history this committee has for protecting fundamental liberties would begin to look into those key issues, the whole premise for how this Trump-Russia investigation started in the first place. And I'll, I'll finish again with this. Emmett Flood wrote a letter to the Attorney General a few weeks back, made an important point. He said, we would all do well to remember if they can do it to a president, imagine what they can do to you and me. Imagine what they can do to regular citizens across this great country. That should be what this committee most safeguards and most protects. And instead, we got memorandums of understanding between the chairman. We got Michael Cohen testifying for seven hours, getting advice from the witness here on obstructing the committee work and not sharing the information with us in a timely fashion. And now we got John Dean, 45 years ago, went to pled guilty to obstruction of justice and now coming in to enlighten the Judiciary Committee on Obstruction of Justice when we could be going right to the start of how this whole thing started. I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Before I go to, Ms., uh, to the next witness, I want to point out that this committee has no memorandum of understanding with any other committee with reference to the, any investigations. Uh, so I don't know. I, I don't know. Excuse me. This committee has no such memorandum of understanding. I'm not aware of any others, but there may be. But this committee has no such memorandum of understanding. And number two, since the gentleman from Ohio cast dispersions on the, on the witness, I would remind everyone that uh, after the after Mr. No, I didn't, Mr. Chairman. I read his statements. I'm I did not cast dispersions. I read his statements. Very well. Since I believe the gentleman cast dispersions. You're wrong. Fine. Since I believe the gentleman cast dispersions on the character and truthfulness of the witness, I would remind everyone that after exhaustive testimony in 1973, when the tapes were revealed, it was revealed that everything that, that Mr. Dean said was correct and truthful. The, the next witness- Mr. Next Chairman, Mr. Chairman, if I could. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Uh, 